Brothers and sisters, as we celebrate today the great and central mystery of the Christian faith and life, it is appropriate to offer this simple catechism about the Most Holy Trinity, one God in three persons. How could it be possible that in one being, there are three persons and they remain one? This has always been the question and challenge to us believers. So we use objects from daily life to illustrate, though inadequately, the mystery. That's why, dear friends, in the early 5th century, St. Patrick of Ireland used a shamrock to illustrate this mystery of the Trinity. A shamrock is trifoliate, meaning it has three leaves that are interconnected and equal in size, but it is counted as one whole leaf attached to a single stem. Similarly, God is trion, meaning there are three persons in God, but these persons of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are of one divine essence. Another frequently used example is fire, a substance that cannot be called fire unless it has flame, heat, and light at the same time. Each of these three components has its own purpose, yet they form one element, which is fire. Now, each of the three persons has his own unique existence and purpose, yet they are related to each other. Thus, they form one being, that is, God, the consubstantial trinity, according to the Catechism. And by consubstantial, we mean of one and the same substance, essence, or nature. The Catechism further teaches us this. I quote from the Athanasian Creed. Now, this is the Catholic faith. We worship one God in the Trinity, and the Trinity in unity, without either confusing the persons or dividing the substance. For the person of the Father is one, the Son's is another, the Holy Spirit's another, but the Godhead of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is one, their glory equal, their majesty co-eternal. Hence, we can say that God as Trinity is our Creator and at the same time is our Savior and at the same time is our Life Giver. These are simple notes on the Trinity, dear friends. But of course, there is much more to discuss. Now, where did we get this belief that God is one in three persons? The word Trinity, after all, does not even exist in scriptures. While the word Trinity cannot be found in scriptures, we have traces of God's Trinitarian nature. The earliest would be in the creation story. The verse, let us make man in our image after our likeness, already implies the Creator was not alone. As we read further, we learn that working together with Him was the Word, or Logos, that through Him all things were made. And the Spirit, or Pneuma, that gives life. Then, ultimately, Jesus revealed the Trinity when He talked about His Father, who is one with Him, and the Holy Spirit, whom He will ask the Father to send to us. Before His ascension, He charged His disciples to make disciples of all peoples and to baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Take note, dear friends, that the Lord said name and not names, as though telling us there is only one God, the Almighty Father, His only Son, and the Holy Spirit the Most Holy Trinity. Friends, may we never forget this mystery of our faith and of God in Himself. First, the Trinity is one God in three persons. 
Secondly, the three divine persons, though distinct from one another, form a unity, in a word, triune. Lastly, the three divine persons are relative to one another. They are holy in and with one another. There you go, my dear brothers and sisters. We hope we have helped you understand in a simple way some aspects of the mystery of the Trinity. Let us pray then to the one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, that our lives may bear witness to our faith, that we may not be wanting in hope, and that we may live loving Him and loving our neighbors evermore.